Every artist needs their own toolkit. A traditional artist might have their brushes, paints, and pencils, while a recent computer engineering graduate might have a janky soldering iron, a multimeter, and a bunch of cut up LED strips. Yeah, probably not the best example of a proper toolkit. And you're probably wondering, why am I even talking about a toolkit in the first place? Well, I just read the book, The Pragmatic Programmer, and in it, the author makes a comparison of a toolkit for programmers. And in this toolkit, the programmers have their IDE, their shell, and their text editor, and they're very efficient with these. It makes their process of creating code faster. So while these ideas weren't their own video, it got me thinking of the idea of a toolkit for a creative coder. What would I have in this toolkit? Well, for me, the least efficient part of my process so far has been my use of color. So that's what I want to add to my toolkit. There is an amazing blog post written by the generative artist Tyler Hobbs where he discusses his own use of color in his generative works, specifically his color arrangement and color palettes. I definitely recommend reading it for yourself, but some of the things he talks about that I found interesting is how he uses colors along a gradient, clumps colors together, or assigns a probability to each color in a color palette and uses it that way. I found this super interesting, so I went ahead and created my own JavaScript library that I can use to interact with colors and color palettes in some of the ways he talks about. And I went about this doing it the right way. I actually wrote documentation for it, unit tests, and I published it to NPM, so I can just NPM install it to any of my future pieces of art. First, we have the all-important name. I called it Iris Gen, as Iris is both the goddess of the rainbow and it's the colorful part of our eye, so very fitting for a color manager. And Iris was already taken on NPM, JavaScript Package Manager, so I had to go with something else. To use it, I can install it with npm install Iris Gen, or if you're using Yarn, which is pretty much NPM, just uh, you can look up the differences on your own. I use Yarn um, with Yarn add Iris Gen. Then I can initialize an iris in two ways. By default, it'll choose one of its own color palettes randomly, or I can pass an array of my own colors in hexadecimal format. Yes, it only takes hex format, but um, for my purposes, if I'm looking up colors and stuff, it's gonna have an option to copy it in hex format, so that's easiest for me anyways. By default, each color in the palette has the same likelihood of being chosen. So if you pick it at random, each one's got the same chance. But you can change that by updating the possibility with an array of decimals as long as that array adds up to one. So if you've got, say, three colors, I could do 20%, 20%, and 60%. So you're going to get that third color more often. Then I can get a random color or I can retrieve the color of the current petal, which is how the iris class keeps its state. Um, this is kind of convoluted, but pretty much... Um, an iris is made up of a bunch of petals. So each of the colors and probabilities that you pass in makes up a petal. That way, um, when you have the color, you can keep using that color, which is like the current petal, as much as you want in your code. And when you want to update the color that's currently being used, you can call update petal, and it updates it that way. Or at any point, you could just get a random color from the palette. Also, the colors are exported in HSL format. So that's got hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue going 0 to 360, saturation and luminance from 0 to 100. And this is what I use but usually in my projects for P5.js and 3.js. So that's what works for me. Again, could be limiting, but I can always add it in other formats in the future. And then when picking a random color updating the petal, you can also pass in an interpolation value. So this can be used to create gradients or more generally to just have the color depend on some outside number that you pass into it. Just another way to increase the flexibility of my projects. This is also my first time creating an NPM package, but it's actually super easy. I might make a separate video on how to do this um, from scratch, but essentially you just make a GitHub repo, edit the package.json to include the file name and the package version and that sort of thing, and then you type npm publish in the command line and it publishes. Now let's take a look at the package in action. I made a little recursive square script with p5.js that uses irisgen to handle the colors from my default palettes, and I think it turned out pretty cool. So I named this artwork irisgen. Extremely original, but it was kind of just a proof of concept for the package, so I kept it simple and unoriginal. If we look at the code, the meat of the algorithm comes in this recurse square function. In it, I take in three parameters, an x, y, and a size. And this is a recursive function, so the first thing you need in any recursive function is the kicker, or the base. Like pretty much whatever criteria you have to kick yourself out of the incursion and break out of it. 
For me, that's when size is less than four. So whenever the, the size of the square is less than four pixels, I want to update the color and return. We're done, we're not drawing anything to the screen. Else, I get the current color and I use that to fill the square in P5.js. I draw the square at that XY position with size, size. And then I get the new size, which is this, the current size divided by two plus the, the border pixels. Then for four times, and so this is a random part to kind of make it a little bit interesting every time you randomize it, I get a random number between zero and 10. And if it's less than nine, so that means 90% of the time it will be less than nine, I recurse the top left square. Then if it's less than eight, so 80% of the time, I recurse the top right square. If it's another 8% of the time, I recurse the bottom left square. And then 10% of the time, I recurse the bottom right square. So this means is you're more likely to see recursion going on to the upper left, upper right, and bottom left, while the lower right is a little bit rare. So you'll see this when I generate some of the artworks. Um, a lot of the time, the bottom right square is just completely empty because only 10% of the time it's actually recursing that way. Then in my setup, I just create my iris, as I talked about how to do it before. And every time I draw it, I update the pedal, and then I recurse the square, starting at the top left corner of the screen with dimension as the size. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> so there we have it. The first proper tool in my generative coding toolkit, IrisGen, with actual documentation and testing. I hope you guys liked this. If you did, please subscribe and I will catch you guys next time.